Shiba Koto and Wanawasa, thank you so much for joining the Naba Perspectives podcast. It's a real pleasure to have you with us. Thank you for having me. Afternoon. Right. Uh, we we have a, a bit of ground to cover. We're going to talk about what's been happening in Zambia. Uh, a lot of good news coming out of Zambia. Uh, it'd be great to get your insights into where the country's heading, what opportunities there are for a partnership with Norway. But before we get into that, uh, give us a little bit of an introduction about yourself, your background, your role within the government, and what's some of your uh, focal area. Okay, so just as a, a brief uh, introduction, my name is Chipokota Mwanawasa, um, normally just referred to as Chipo. I'm the policy advisor to the president of Zambia and also the deputy head of the presidential delivery unit in Zambia. I'm a lawyer by uh, profession. I have uh, LOB, a joint honors in English and French law, an LLM in commercial law, and an MSc in public policy from the London School of Economics in the, in the UK. But aside from that, uh, it might be of interest also that the current president of Zambia is someone who uh, worked with and worked for for a long time. I joined him prior to him coming into office. So even from a policy advisory perspective, these are policies that we've been seeing through from manifesto and now we want to see through to implementation. So I was on his team for three out of five of the elections um, that he's run before he came into office. And I did about nine to 10 years um, with him on his campaign um, team as well. So doing those three elections before before he won. So I hope that's helpful. A, a long road uh, and a, a lot of work, which is which is coming which is coming to fruition. Of course, before we talk about the Zambian economy, um, to tell us a little bit more about the, the president's delivery unit. What what exactly um, is that? So a couple of months uh, after assuming office, um, the president uh, realized that he had inherited um, a, a system that was yet to be transformed, and this would take time. Um, and it was basically impacting on his ability to deliver on time. So a presidential delivery unit was then set up, which sees through the effective and timely delivery of presidential pronouncements and presidential priorities. So it's very focused. It doesn't look after everything and anything. It doesn't usurp the mandate of government officials, but basically monitors and uh, keeps um, the public service accountable to deliver uh, on, on time uh, through like a track and trace uh, and um, track and trace mechanism of, of what we call delivery. So that we have a, a team of at least 20 people in the delivery unit, and it has a head of which I happen to be the deputy head as well. All right, so it's all about implementation. Implementation is, of course, key when it comes yes, to Yes, actually, to other people refer to it as the implementation unit. So Right, right. Okay, excellent. Now, since President Hishilema took office, I think it's fair to say that when he came into office, he inherited... Or he took over at a time where Zambia had been through some challenging years, which uh, culminated, of course, in the country defaulting on its external debt back in 2020 during the COVID pandemic. So there was, there was a lot of work to do. Um, as I indicated at the start, there has been a lot of good news about Zambia. Um, the economy is seems to be on a path, not just not just of recovery, but it seems to be kind of moving ahead quite um, at, at quite a strong pace. There's a lot of resurging interest in terms of investment in the country and a sense that the country is kind of coming into its own. Give us a bit of a sense of what that journey has been like since the president took over and uh, you know what's gone into to pushing this turnaround. Yeah, so maybe I could just um, structure um, the response to your question in 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 three, I could frame it in three ways, and I'll take a step back before we start talking about the economic transformation and the debt restructure. I think it's important to note that when President Hichilema came into office, he was very big on making sure um, that the, the democratic credentials of the country are consolidated, because good governance is good for economic investment and investment across. So investors really want to know that they are coming to a country that is stable, 
and also that their investment is protected and it will grow. So he made sure that even during the transition after the election that it was peaceful. This is a country that um, has had seven presidents. President Hichilema is the seventh from five different political parties holding peaceful elections, has an active fight against corruption, which the president is, is uh, spearheading. And when we talk about peace, this is a country that's surrounded by eight neighboring countries and we call it land linked and has never been to war. So that's very good from um, an investment perspective. And he was also trying to make sure that the country remains unified. The next thing that um, he embarked on immediately other than political stability and democracy is economic transformation. Um, in order for us to realize um, uh, recovery of the, of the economy, as you indicated that he inherited a debt mountain, this debt mountain was about approximately 26 billion um, in, in dollars in 2021. And you may or not, may not be aware, but the bilateral debt with governments has been restructured uh, since then. And instead of paying um uh, uh so much uh money zambia will only be paying 75 million uh annually for the next 10 years and in the end we'll only pay 750 million dollars with the first three years being sort of like a holiday so we won't be paying just to give us a bit more fiscal space and recently in the last two weeks we managed to close the restructure of three billion dollars with international bond uh holders again giving us more uh, physical space to concentrate on critical areas for recovery, uh, such as better infrastructure, the social areas on health, education, uh, and most importantly, to be able to implement um, economic uh, sustainable policies, you know, that will see more uh, growth. Uh, just to give you an example that this uh, growth has already started, in 2020, Zambia's GDP, that was even before we came into uh, office, was around 18 billion. We are very ashamed about this number. But since President Hichilema came into office in 2021, we've seen an average growth, annual growth of GDP averaging 5.7%. Uh, and currently Zambia's GDP is at 29 billion. So from 18 billion in 2020. So already you can see uh, that something is happening and we hope to sustain this and do even, even better. And in addition to the debt restructuring, the economic um, transformation has focused on areas, you know, uh, specific areas. Everything's priority and urgent, but specific areas that will ensure economic turnaround, uh, such as mining, uh, agriculture, energy, trade, and logistics. Uh, because we feel these, and to, as well as tourism, these are the key economic uh, drivers to uh, turn around. Uh, the economy. The third aspect, as I've highlighted, political stability, economic transformation as 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 a as a strategy for recovery, is how we are responding to day-to-day -day challenges. You know, so what happens when you hit a hurdle? When an investor um, is stuck, you know, and they they the officials in the in the government or they are struggling to find information and in, within the private sector what happens the president has created two instruments two tools one of which i've already spoken to which is the presidential delivery unit to ensure that uh, rigidities are unlocked from the government side to you know roll the red carpet for um, investment and investors and make it slightly easier and see through um, um, implementation of, of projects, uh, particularly those coming from the from the private sector, because he strongly believes that the private sector, having a healthy private sector, will lead to having a, a stronger economy. He then also created what we call uh, the uh, Public Private Dialogue Forum, the PPDF, which inter which is an interface between the public sector and the and the private sector of um, unlocking. Uh, rigidities uh, also uh, through reform. So trying to streamline licensing uh, processes, trying to cut down on the number of permits that you need, for instance, to set up 
uh, investments such as in the hospitality industry, for instance, if you need to set up a hotel, you might need like 2021 licenses. So just trying to to cut down on the bureaucracy. And we can't do that as a government if we're not listening to the private sector. So that's basically a platform where the private sector comes to um, present the issues or the challenges they have. And then the public sector, you know, uh, is in the same room and they agree on a way forward. And then we see through that reform um, from a government perspective. So just to give you a high level of, of what's going on um, in Zambia. Thank you very much, Chipo. There's a lot to unpack there. Um, and, and I want to talk about mining. But before we get to that, um, first of all, congratulations on, on basically getting a debt deal. Um, I know and much of the world knows it's been a, a difficult, complicated process. Um, is that is is that the end of it now for Zambia? Or, I mean, is, is there still work to be done in that respect? Or can we sort of like say the country is ready to move on from, uh, from the unfortunate events of, of 2020? We've been ready to move like since we, we <laughs> got into office, but this was something um, that was holding us, holding us back. Um, but also it's important to um, just highlight that the hard work starts now. So it's, you know, the hard work actually starts now for us now to grow the economy. This, so I mentioned the average growth of GDP now, but it's important to also say before we came into office, the growth was actually negative 2.8. So we were growing negatively. Um, so in order for us to sustain this and build on this, we have to do a bit more um, and we have to be more prudent uh, from, a, from a debt perspective. So trying not to acquire unsustainable, unnecessary uh, debt. And this is something that we hope to see through. There's been a lot of reform actually in that uh, respect as well. For example, we recently passed a law that um, any significant uh, debt will have to, who would need parliamentary approval. You know, you just can't be in government and, and, and borrow and then all of us just get surprised one day that there's actually accumulative debt. So it's, I think the hard work starts now. So we, yes, the country is going up, but also just to note that um, we need to do a lot more going forward. Now, presumably international investment is, is an important part of, of moving forward. Um, is it, um, is it, you know, are, are you starting to, how should I say, see the fruits of, of what's been happening over the last couple of years? Is investment picking up? What are you seeing in terms of interest and um, where is the interest? There's a lot of uh, international uh, interest and I think the president has done a lot also to market the country. We actually refer to him as the chief marketing officer of the country just to show um, how good an investment uh, destination Zambia is. And I'll give you a specific example on mining that one of the first reforms we embarked on was to make the mining uh, environment more attractive and to stabilize um, that, that sector by showing that, you know, the, the, there wouldn't be so many changes um, in the legal reform, especially that mining is a long-term uh, investment. So we did a few reforms which gave investment confidence. And we saw the likes of uh, First Quantum Minerals, which is uh, one of the biggest mines in Zambia and globally, um, as well, uh, make an investment, uh, an investment of close to um, two, two point five billion. Um, no, about one point three billion um, dollars, uh, and this obviously has had a, a ripple uh, effect in the sector by seeing other uh, mining companies such as Barrick uh, also uh, commit a two billion. Um, expansion um, in mining investment and and we've also uh, you know cleaned up legacy transactions in the mining sector that were problematic like the mining the, the Mopani mines do where we've seen um, countries that would wouldn't normally invest in mining such as the UAE um, take over one of Zambia's biggest mines that was also a big um, uh, transaction and altogether, these mining transactions 
account for at least over eight billion dollars which has been committed just in the last two years so you can see the interest the confidence and the and the commitment and i think the call there to anyone else who's looking to zambia's mining sector and is a bit skeptical as to whether it's the right destination to invest in is that you will be left out everyone is coming to 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 zambia so this is the right time to invest the environment um is giving enough confidence and reassuring that um this is this is a, a mining destination and just to add on to that is that we have all the base um, metals in zambia from manganese copper um lithium all of them for uh, electric for the electric vehicle uh, value chain a value chain that we actually want um, to to implement and work on and the work has since started a feasibility study has been uh, conducted and the results are out and they look fantastic um, that Zambia will do and we're doing this in partnership with our neighboring country the Democratic Republic of Congo which is also a very big mining um, country so having these two countries together you can you, you, you are left to your own imagination of, of um, you know, what investment opportunities um, are there, i.e. The, the electric uh, value chain. But there's also other minerals that you find, such as gold, um, diamonds, and, and just also something that will be of interest is that right now only about 50% of Zambia is mineral mapped. So we are just concluding the the procurement of a mining, a mining mapping company. We're going to be mapping the country to understand better what else uh, we have underground. And this will also make it easier for investors um, to be able to have targeted um, interest and say, I want to have a closer look at that piece because of the results that are there. So we should be starting on the mapping before the end of um, this year. Yeah, so there's, and there's a lot more potential a lot more to come. I know that uh, one of the objectives is to triple copper production alone to something yeah. like three million, more than triple it to like three million tons by the end of the decade. And as you've, yes. as you've hinted at and you've preempted me on this, I'm glad you did. Of course, what we're seeing as well is that the race for access, not just access to Africa's critical minerals, but also the value addition is is well and truly on. And there's a lot of, fa a lot of fascinating things happening in Zambia in that respect. And, Glad to hear that um, you know it's it, things are starting to click. Um, outside of mining, um, what else? What else is happening? Where else are, are you seeing the interest? Um, you know, what are some of the priorities? You mentioned agriculture and tourism earlier, for example. Yes, I I could talk about all those things, but in the interest of time, I'll confine you to agriculture and energy, energy on the electricity side. Um, so agriculture is Africa's green gold. You know, uh, right now. Um, I think the the global food uh, supply systems have been impacted by the wars in different um, places. And interestingly, a continent like uh, Africa relies a lot on um, grain and fertilizers from countries like Ukraine and Russia. And I think a pin dropped recently when we couldn't actually get um, uh, food security and but Zambia, we're not sitting uh, back and, and, you know, holding our face in our hands, but we are actually getting on uh, with some transformative uh, policy decisions, uh, one of which is to um, encourage irrigation and irrigation mm -hmm. investment. So trying to not only have rain-fed uh, crops, but having mechanization and irrigation in our agriculture sector to be able to produce uh, food, not only for domestic consumption, you know, but also for the entire region. As I said, Zambia is land-linked with eight neighboring countries. So even if Zambia has got a population of 20 million people, in the region, you basically have a market of at least 300 million uh, people before you even have to go further into the continent or export off the continent. So if you are an agriculture um, investment um, company, whether in grain or, or livestock, this is a destination with, a, you know, with, a, with, a, with a, an assured um, market. And we have some of the best agricultural uh, uh, soils as well. So 
we, that's uh, one of the biggest areas for investment, and we see that it will also contribute to the increase of, of, of GDP and revenue to the country. But um, another important aspect I would highlight is electricity production. So also, this is not only unique to Africa. We are hearing about um, shortages or impacts also in Europe, uh, people even turning on their coal plants, um, you know, countries like G Germany. It means that um, we all need to work on um, more production of, of power, and this could be through uh, renewable uh, resources, so solar, wind, uh, exploring also for, for, for gas. And currently, Zambia, almost 90% of our power production is green because we are a highly hydro uh, country. But because um, climate change is also real, sometimes we can be impacted by uh, relying on uh, hydro, hydro uh, power generation. And therefore, we are more interested in getting an energy mix, you know, that has different types of 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 options that way we always have sustainable uh power supply that can then go to the mines and also to the irrigation so i think that's a huge area of interest where we're looking for uh both domestic and international investment to look into setting up more power plants uh, because the demand is certainly there um, at the moment only 30 percent of zambia is uh, connected to the grid so the demand is not only to get more of the current um, demand sorted, but also for future projections as demand continues to grow because we are quite uh, pressed for, for economic development and that's going to need a uh, good supply of, of electricity. Two, two absolutely fundamentally important sectors right there. And as you said, you know, the whole we, we've all received a, a bit of an unwelcome wake up call in terms of food security and agriculture in particular. But if it stimulates the development of the sector, then, you know, that that is that is a good outcome. Now, one final uh, area I, I'd like to, to pick your brain on is uh, where Norway fits into into the picture in terms of Zambia. Uh, I, as you know, as Anyone who follows Africa these days, there's a lot of interest from many parts of the world in partnering with the continent, um, be it Asia, Europe, the Middle East, um, North America, you know, you name it. Uh, much of the world is looking to Africa to some extent for the reasons that you've mentioned, you know, when it comes to food security, when it comes to the green transition, it's not going to happen without Africa. Norway sitting up in Northern Europe, a small country in a way, um, where does Norway fit into this? What kind of opportunities for partnership do you see there? The opportunities are several and, and, and many. But just to highlight a few, I think Norway, um, like many other European and Western countries, have an advantage point of being advanced in technology um, and value addition. And this is where we are trying to get to as a country and as a continent in particular. So bringing that uh, technological aspect, digitization, value addition, so on the electric vehicle value chain. So once we have the metal and the minerals, how do we get that copper, that manganese and lithium into a battery? You know, and eventually how do you then get to, you know, parts that then assemble a, a vehicle? So I think that um, we could do a lot of quick learning the fact that these are countries that are much, much uh, ad advanced than we are, and instead of trying to experiment and trying to figure it out on our own, we could joint venture uh, with investors and, and business people. But also, uh, this is a continent that is also looking for affordable capital. So my president is on record, you know, talking about uh, trying to get African countries affordable capital. So there are people in countries like Norway that have some extra money, some extra resources for um, investment, and they could then put it, you know, in, in some of these sectors we've, we've spoken about. Value addition generally is a very big thing in, in, in Zambia. So even on the agriculture side, so maybe the Norwegians might not necessarily want to farm the corn, the tomatoes, but they might want to can them. You know, they might want to dry some of the fruits, press some of the fruits into juice, etc. And, and I think those are some of the things to look at. Um, 
um, from a, a Norwegian uh, perspective. But in particular, I think we're quite excited to to do some to develop the electric value chain um, uh, industry with Norway, uh, taking advantage of of the expertise. Uh, and also the experience that you've had as a country to this point, including setting up charging points. You know, we also want to advance to driving electric vehicles. And, you know, but then how do we make sure that it actually, there's an ecosystem that actually works? Absolutely. And uh, it's a massive opportunity, if you don't mind me saying so. Um, value addition to me, it stands out as one of the key issues here and one of the one of the most important uh, elements in terms of the future of Zambia. Um, as you know, and NABA, we as NABA, we, we led a business delegation down to, to Zambia back in October of 2023. And we were fortunate enough to, to uh, have a meeting with the president. And I just recall, you know, he made the point about value addition and the words that really, really stuck out to me is he said, this is not a joke. And uh, to me, it's, it speaks to the, the seriousness of, of what's happening, which brings me to my final question for you, Chipo, which is what do the next three to five years look like uh, for Zambia? What would you like to see happen? What do you think, you know, what can we anticipate um, over the next three to five years or so in terms of investment, in terms of economic development? You know, um, you said the hard work starts now. What does success look like five years from now? So just to bring it into perspective in that in just over two years, Zambia will be going back to an election. So we're actually two and a half years into our mandate. It means we're two and a half years to uh, the president running for re-election. It means between now and then we have to deliver. It's implementation, 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 you know, between uh, now and then. And um, success would be to see a lot of these things that we've been uh, pushing for, talking about, you know, to actually be, you know, to see them in front of us or to be in motion. Um, and, and so we are pressed for time. You know, time is something that's just not uh, on, on our side. But generally, um, in the next uh, five years, beyond, even beyond the election, is that we are on the road to economic uh, transformation and recovery. We'll continue seeing the GDP uh, growing. We're hoping to keep this growth uh, steady and stable. And we're very ambitious um, as a country. We have a president that's very uh, ambitious and uh, works very hard. So we are all not um, sleeping. So there'll be a lot of sleepless nights in the next uh, five years just to achieve uh, economic transformation. So we, the president's uh, ambition and vision, and when you say five years, it will be halfway through his next tenure, is that he hopes that by the time uh, he leaves office, he would have doubled uh, the, at minimum, doubled the GDP from what he founded at. So I think we are on track to achieve that and maybe perhaps even triple it if we if we work hard enough. Well, I mean, that's a fantastic vision, great ambition to have. And uh, it's an exciting time for Zambia and the indications are that uh, it's working. Uh, on, on, on which note, you know, we can uh, bring wrap up the conversation all i can say chipo is uh, thank you so much for the time thanks so much for the insight and uh, all the best with the sleepless nights thank you very much and we're looking forward to helping us actualize uh, all these investment interests and pledges from uh, naba well we will do what we can to 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 support and you know to support your visions and ambitions absolutely delighted to obviously partner with uh, with zambia in that respect thank you again Thank you.